Acting Class Weekly with legendary character actor Sean Whelan. Lessons, tips, and insight into the craft and business of acting from a man who's been directed by the likes of Tim Burton, Ang Lee, Michael Bay, Wes Craven, Tom Hanks, and many more of Hollywood's A-List. He is 30 years an actor and your professor, Sean Whelan. Hello, guys. Hello, Acting Class Weekly in the house and bright blue jacket because the person that I am doing a tribute show to today, just bright in the world, just beautiful, colorful. There's no other jacket I could wear to honor him. And I'm talking about my friend, actor Sam Lloyd, who a lot of you uh, people know him mostly possibly from Ted on Scrubs. Uh, but he also did some really cool stuff on West Wing and um, Modern Family and a bunch of other shows. You can see his credits in IMDb, but he was also a friend of mine for 30 years. And to help me with this tribute, as always, is Miss Phenomenal, Roxy Stryer. Hi, Sean. Happy and to be Mr. here today. And Mr. Funtabulous, Jeff Graham. Sean, we're thinking about you today, man, but very excited to pay tribute to your wonderful and extremely talented friend. So before I start, do you, or Jeff, you're definitely familiar because you were a Scrubs fan, correct? I do like Scrubs a lot. I love um, Zach Braff in general. I think like he has a really cool career. I yeah. love Garden State. Um, yes. But yeah, you know, what's funny. I surprisingly wasn't the biggest Scrubs fan. My reference for Sam is actually Desperate Housewives, which I oh, love. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So even though he's known for comedy and Desperate Housewives was a very funny show. I think that yes. was... It was a drama wearing a comedy as a jacket. It's kind of how I yes. describe that show. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, he was really great in that show as Dr. Albert Goldstein. Yeah, yeah. And Roxy, were you familiar with Sam's work before? I was a massive Scrubs fan. So oh, you, no you pointed to your wrong co-host for that I one. Did. Yeah, I was I a totally massive, did. massive Scrubs fan. Um, I used to watch with my mom. So I have a lot of great memories of, of watching Scrubs. Um, and yeah, I, I was a big Zach Braff fan. Uh, fan as well but I thought that everybody on the show was incredible so and fun so yeah the, of course I'm a musical fan of your friend yeah um, Sam the the musical element they allowed in the show was great you know and yeah it just was, made it was it different it was fun. unique I think that right um, a lot of people online are going back and uh, re-watching episodes and remembering yeah. how awesome the show truly was uh, mm -hmm. Because, yeah, you hear doctor show, you think like ER or right. Grey's Anatomy, but right. Scrubs was a whole different take on that and how they were able to make that funny, uh, but also it was very heartfelt. So, but I, I uh, funny enough, I was also a, a Housewives fan. Uh, didn't That's know funny. that. Didn't know that about you, Jeff. So, love that. Yeah. Show. The only thing I don't think I know about, I didn't watch him on West Wing, which I, people say is fantastic. So, I've never seen oh. an episode of The West Wing. I'm also, a yeah. very big West Wing fan. So you remember uh, Sam on so, West Wing. So I'm crushing it on for us on all fronts right now. Uh, it yeah, was I, a dramatic watched, role? Yeah, it's a dramatic show. Um, so he was dramatic, not like a lighter take on anything? The entire show was um, was more uh, dramatic, so no. But I, I believe he played like a, a commander of some sort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, U.S. Space Commander Bob Engler. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, Everything he does, he brings a little bit of levity to it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, that, it's an intense show. And by yeah. the way, a show that really holds up today. Yeah. Uh, which it's hard to make a political show that I feel like is so relevant years later. But uh, That's a lot of crazy. people have been binging back that. Uh, but yeah, I've, I mean, I've seen Sam in dozens of shows. Dozens of dozens. Dozens yeah. of shows. Dozens, dozens. Well, uh, before we do the deep dive into my history with Sam, I've known him for 30 years and pay tribute to him. We have to get into Sean's week. And, and because it's Sam and because of his musical love of the Beatles, he loved the Beatles. I think it has to be a Beatle-ish Sean's week, whichever, <laughs> whatever that means. Oh, to wow. Us. This is going to be interesting. <sighs> All right, ready? Yep. One, two, three. Sean's week. <laughs> All right, talk to me, guys. That was the first rehearsal of a Beatles like cover band. So I was a Yellow Submarine. Where were you? I was a very Liverpudlian uh, person. I was just kind of doing British. <laughs> okay. Now, what is a Yellow Submarine? Were you a Blue Meanie, or what does that mean? I like tried to do it to. I, I said, see. Okay. Sean's oh, I see. Week. I got it, got it. So the to the tune of. 
Yeah, oh, yeah. And, and like the chipper, the chipper beetles. Right, right, right. The, the fun part of it. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Well, uh, my week of uh, online sketch show with my classes, you know, I'm kind of guiding the show. And uh, usually when in my sketch class, people would bring in their own stuff. They would do their homework and leave. We have a lot of people. And so they're, you know, plugging along and it's starring the well-liked and well-respected by my class, Roxy Stryer as well. Woohoo! Um, it's so loving. good to be back in class. Is it? Yeah, are you kidding me, How does it me, feel? Sean? Well, it's just, I like being around like-minded people always. Mm -hmm. um, and especially being in isolation by myself. Uh, it's very, right. it's very um, creatively fulfilling right now. Right. And also I really believe in what we're doing, which I know we don't, we're not really revealing at this moment. We'll keep you guys posted, but it's a very funny concept. And yeah. right now it kind of combines a few of my loves Yes. So uh, yes. I'm really into it. And everybody is so I, open and welcoming. Sometimes I've gone into class. I don't know if this has happened to either of you guys in any of the classes you've ever joined, but people are very closed off to the new person yeah. in class. Um, and so I was a little nervous and kind of quiet at first, um, but now they've made me feel really comfortable. So I'm sharing my thoughts and, and pitching ideas and they're really receptive to it. So they've been awesome. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, she had a free, you know, it's always those first few pitches where you can, and Roxy knocked them out of the park in our first class. And I think people were like, ooh, gee. So Thanks. it was very cool. Tried cool. to pick my spots. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, TikTok still doing that, thinking like, I've got this nailed, I figured it out. And then you do, and I got like four amazing days and then you like post the thing that you think is right in the zone and it doesn't get any views. So you, you never know, but it's fun. It's like a network. You know what I mean? You're your mm. own network. You try things that work and then shows fail. And then, you know, you're just trying to figure out what works and why. And, uh, but I'm having a blast. I'm having a blast. I'm making a complete fool of myself. And I changed my name to Sean Whalen actor. So I'm the same on all platforms. I'm a little nervous about it. I thought it was a little annoying and cocky, but it didn't seem to nope. affect anything. I didn't get nope. weird it's comments or move. anything. I'm yeah. telling you it's the move uh and then on i just had a first meeting today next week on twitch i'm starting a show with felissa rose of sleepaway camp oh We've cool crazy it's going to be called my uh my weird jobs uh oh, no, sorry it's called our weird job and it's just basically about the craziness of our life how we go to conventions and how we do what what's the crazy stories from different sets we've been on from um you know, uh, the the way we have to promote stuff, just the weirdness. And that came from a, a fan coming up and was like meeting Phyllis and I, and they were like shivering, shaking, and, and just so blown away. And I just said, it's it's okay, I'm, I'm just a normal guy. Like, you know, I was just literally getting attitude from my teenage daughter on the phone two seconds before <laughs> that, you know what I mean? So I'm like a normal person. And then I just said, listen, and I, we're just like you. I just have a weird job. And Sean, so that's do you why we like call it a weird job? Sorry to interrupt. Do you like the like obsessive fanboys who meet you? And I mean, I'm sure you like them as people because they support you. But yeah, I feel like I there are some people who get off on like fame. Whereas I think of you as like more of like an actor who's also right, a famous right. person. No, I just think it connects me to my audience to understand that it, it just, it's just, it's the thing I said to my sketch class the other night, Roxy, is, you know, after Sam passed, there was a humongous outpouring. It's not ending. I'm still getting articles. Yeah. Um, if, you know, what we do matters to people. It, it Entertainment, especially now, it's huge. It's important. I think that's why TikTok is blowing up that we don't have to wait for studios to tell us what we like. We just get to choose and it's just people down the street. It's, uh, and, and so it's, to me, it's interesting to hear how it matters to different people, mm. you know? And it's just the weirdness that I think I've said it on here before. It's just, I know it seems weird and I have a weird job, but, and I know the hardest part is I've been on your first dates. I've been on your friend night out at the movies. I've been in your living room. You just haven't been in mine you know, and mm. there's one of me that you've all seen and there's thousands of you. So it doesn't diminish you if I don't remember you from the last convention or, do you know what I mean? I so said, you just have to understand, but it's really cool to talk to people and see how and when, I mean, I, one of my favorite things is asking, when did they first see people on the stairs? Five, five, 
it's terrifying it's you know what i mean like and then some people go like, oh i was so scared of that thing i couldn't see it till i was in you know college so it's just, like just that stuff i love it it's fascinating to me so that, no Sean. but i don't get off on like you know my my i seem to have middle-aged women who adore me for some reason <laughs> so i don't know what that's about um and then listen i'm just talking about being a human just dealing with life issues obviously the death of sam lloyd and uh you know, dealing with my daughter's um, school stuff, getting her done, getting my college daughter ready for when she's done school and what's she going to do for the rest of the summer and will she be going back in fall and just dealing with what everything else is, everyone else is and trying to pivot and find out what works for me right now. And the future of Hollywood is completely unknown. We have no idea what's going to happen. So uh, trying to stay on top of that and be creative, you know, but there, I read a great article that just said the rebirth of Hollywood is coming. You know, will you be ready? And I'm mm. thinking, Where was that? I'm, I'm thinking we will be Roxy with our kind of show that we're doing, you know? I hope so. Uh, yeah. Where was that, Sean? Like Jeff just asked. For uh, I will that get on. that. Doug Van Beber sent that to me. So I will get that to you guys, but it was called something about the re let me, let me pull it up really quick on Facebook, but it was the rebirth of hollywood while you're looking that up sean i had a funny yes. starstruck moment when i was on your facebook i saw that okay. you posted a beautiful tribute to your friend sam which of course is today's show but um your facebook friend alan ruck commented uh, yeah. which if you guys don't know of course he's in barrett bueller but also most recently he plays connor on succession succession you guys are huge I'm fans. Uh, jeff and i are both obsessed, obsessed. with yes he might listen i'm i keep thinking i can call him and have him on the show but i'm kind of terrified of you two are you i know i know i might we'll I be might cool need... sean we'll be, be cool. cool i'll act I so cool I'll, I'll turn I swear on my I'm cool. yeah uh <laughs> it's an article cool. from medium.com oh great Medium. yeah and it's prepare for the death and rebirth of hollywood cool yeah pretty cool article as long as i have so, a rebirth yeah, yeah rebirth and and listen part of the rebirth is us doing the show like this and having you guys listen about acting and how we can help you now and in the future and be ready for the new Hollywood. So uh, Roxy, how can we help them get more info on the show? Yeah, mm. well, speaking of um, just you guys at home, I'm really appreciative that we've got people in the live chat right now. People are talking about Sam in here. So we do go live on After Buzz TV's YouTube every single Wednesday, 3 p.m. Pacific time. Um, we've got some super chats in here. Larry Lee says Sam Lloyd was amazing. Glenn Caesar says, I only knew Sam Lloyd from Scrubs and then his band, but yes, he was amazing. Larry Lee also said, hit that like button, which we appreciate, of course, because the more likes, subscribers, and comments that we get, the bigger that the, uh, that the fan base can be and the more likely we can continue the show for years and years to come. And I know that, Sean, every week, I remember at the beginning of this, Sean, you were like, are we going to be able to fill a, a an episode every week is that something and now it's like i mean we could literally do this forever there's so yeah. much content and so much so, stuff much. That, uh, so many questions that you guys have and that we want to answer for you so i appreciate you being here if you are on youtube right now if you could just take one second to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the network that really helps us or if you're listening on apple Podcasts, spotify wherever podcasts are give us that five star uh, and write a comment. We want to know what you guys have to say. And especially on today's episode, if you guys have any comments about Sam Lloyd, if you could leave him, uh, leave the comment down below, we'd really appreciate reading those. I'm sure, Sean, that would be fun for you. That would be nice. Uh, yeah. And I, I would just love to see them. So thank you guys for being here, especially during this weird rebirth of Hollywood time. Yes. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm really glad we're doing the show today, Sean. And thank you thank for opening you. up to us about your friend, Sam. Yeah. So I have to go back to the beginning, which is 88... 89 uh in the groundlings you kind of moved through several classes like you do now but you back then you could move through like beginning groundlings is a comedy improv sketch um uh school and theater where people like elvira pb herman will ferrell um melissa mccarthy many came from lisa kudrow lisa kudrow um and you would go for like beginning uh intermediate writing lab and advanced. advanced sunday show but people like sam and myself got through it in two years which is unheard of now so now it takes an average of i think they say seven years or something seven to, years to, to get through start and, can, and go through all of the yeah we, we got through in two years and um so then 
people would get voted in every six months for the Sunday show. And that's where I met Sam. He was in an influx of new people. Some people left and got voted to either continue, move on or leave the Sunday company and go into the main company of Groundlings. And then Sam came in and that's where I met him. And we had an immediate connection because he's uh, from Vermont, uh, Weston, Vermont. And my family, there's a very famous store, a country store in Weston, Vermont that I used to go to as a kid because my grandparents lived in Vermont and all my aunts and uncles. So that's where we were, we hit it off right there, but then we just, you know, became friends. We, he's so sweet, so funny. And one of my big memories of that time, there's so many and I, we could talk for hours, but there's so many as, as Sam and I came up, we wanted to do a goofy, you know, band parody and Sam came up with the idea of you know, lights out, lights come up, four guys, you hear the opening strains of da 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 the I want to hold your hand, you know, and they go, you've seen them, they're international stars, and you heard them on everything, uh, and here they are live, and it goes, oh yeah, I, and then you just see four guys going, oh, they're just doing and the we clapping. were called, they go, yes, the clappers, and so we were the group of men that were hired to clap on everything, you know? <laughs> and, and so it, we, it's a, gr I'm, I'm looking for it now. If I find it, I will definitely bring it to the show. And cause I'm sure people will put it. We, there's a way to get a VHS in digital form, but I really, really want it. Cause it was so funny because, you know, we did that and then they go, they even tried to tackle Broadway and it was, I want to be in America. And we're like, <laughs> you know, and then the, and then, you know, they made it huge in the seventies with car wash, you know, Oh yeah, you know, and then they, there was some weird digital eighty stuff that we're like looking around all petrified, and it's like, but the clappers are, have been known forever. And uh, you know what you could do if you updated it, have the lights go on and off as you uh, as you clap. Well, one of our one of our uh, last texts that I was going through our texts over the last years was Sam. Uh, I said, dude, you've got to hear the new Jonas Brothers song. I'm a sucker for you. <laughs> Have you seen that? And, and he wrote me back. He's totally. like, oh my God, I couldn't sleep the other night. And I turned it on. He goes, I love the clapping and that, you know? Uh, and and uh, so that was one of the funnest things that we wrote together. And then we were just fast friends after that. We would always go out to the Sunday show, me, my ex-wife, his girlfriend at the time, and sometimes party till dawn, crazy. And uh, he was always just so fun and, and funny. Um, so that we were partying one time and this was the funniest thing is uh, we had enjoyed some cannabis. Roxy, I'm saying it in a very formal way, by the way. You hear that? I like that you said Roxy. <laughs> Roxy, cannabis. <laughs> because I'm a deflect. very big cannabis supporter. Yeah, well, because if, if I get heat, I'm just deflecting it right on you immediately. I, we enjoyed some cannabis, Roxy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and we were sitting in the back seat of this car, and our girlfriend, my ex wife, were in the front, and we were just telling each other, like, hey, man, like, that really stinks or whatever. And we said, wow, that's the truth. And we're like, no, this is the truth of the back seat. And we would always say, this is the truth. And like, we would be very honest with each other and say, wow, that's a harsh truth. And then we, so whenever we talk to each other, ever from that moment on, probably 1991, till when he passed, we would say, yo man, what's the truth? And we'd mm. say, the truth is, you know, and we'd go on. And even when- I love he, that. Even when he found out he had cancer, he's like, dude, that's a harsh truth. And he goes, dude, it's a harsh truth. You know what I mean? Uh, and, but that was the way we spoke to each other. And that was one thing we never, throughout our entire friendship, it was always the truth is. And the funniest text uh, that I just read, I was about to do a show and he's doing a musical. He's like, hey, are you available for my musical? And I said, do I have to sing? He goes, no, it's a part of a heckler. You would, uh, you would steal, you know, you, part of a heckler, like a Statler and Waldorf from the Muppets and you would steal the show. And I'd say, don't think I wouldn't. He goes, now I regret the decision. <laughs> and, and I go, oh, you know, fuck you. If you can't, if you don't poke the bear, if you can't take it. And he goes, wow, that's a harsh truth. Oh. <laughs> and, but, but a real truth, <laughs> you know, 
And uh, I ended up doing that show and we loved it, but it was just fun to go back to the funniness of our texts and stuff, the way we used to talk to each other. But that, we did that the rest of the time. And then one time Sammy came up to me and said, at a party, I have an idea for a movie, but no one wants to do it with me. And I said, what? He goes, two words, it's genius. And I said, what? He goes, president dog. And I went, oh, I'm in. And so we wrote a script about a talking dog who runs for president. It's all about his <laughs> campaign. And it was gonna be like, oh, we can just sell this. It'll be easy, sell it to like a kid show channel. And you know, it's like a money grab, right? But it's just not in Sam's nature. He couldn't do it. It, <laughs> it turned out to be, and I just read it recently. It's a very sweet fable about a talking dog who, uh, you know, people don't take seriously because he's a dog, but he's a genius. He's well, he's really smart. He's a genius and people push against him. And then kind of at the very end, he's finally, you know, through all these people trying to shut him down and make fun of him and stuff like that. He stands up there and goes, guess what? I am a dog. You're right. And he goes, and guess what? If someone comes into my yard, I'll bark and tell them to go. If they don't, I'll bite them in the butt. And the crowd goes, ah, you know, and uh, John, it's a what very are you sweet, about sweet with that script. script. What are you thinking about with it now? I mean, we tried to do it several times. The great news was we it went out on spec back in the nineties. There was a thing that they would like release a free script on spec and all the studios would read it and it would be like a bidding war if it was a hot script. Yeah. And we got a lot of interest, but people were like, oh, a talking dog movie, it's a kid movie, I don't know. Because family friendly wasn't that big back then. But uh, Brian, it, uh, Jim Henson's company loved it. And we went in there and talked to them and they said, look, here's the good news and the bad news. The good news is uh, we love your script. The bad news is we don't want to do a talking dog movie, but we love you guys so much. There's a few writers around town that are pitching the next Muppet movie and we want you guys to do it. So we went and came back with, and it was Sam's idea. Uh, we did uh, Kermit the Frog as James Bond, and it was called James Frog. And it was about the killer souffle with the, the Swedish chef was going to unleash the killer souffle on the world. And uh, Miss Piggy was called Porky Galore. You know, I mean, we, and, and instead of him skiing, he skis in the beginning and flies off the cliff. And instead of the big British flag that comes out on James Bond parachute, it's a lily pad. Yeah. Like, it was so fun and they loved it, but they, they loved it. And we were the final two uh, scripts and uh, their legal scared them and said, ooh, but MGM owns James Bond and it might be, you know, but I don't know why they were scared because it's a parody. It's a straight up parody. But I think they were a little afraid of legal and they, and it was, but we made it to the top two scripts because the, and then they ended up doing a pirate Muppet movie, which tanked. So, Sean, so. I'm, I'm more mean, like these are scripts that you have now. Are you thinking about resurfacing them? Yeah. I mean, definitely thinking about at least doing a reading of President. Uh, I'd love to send it to you guys. I'd love to hear what you guys think. It's just very sweet. And it was set in the 90s. So there's like extreme games and, and Palm Pilots. And we always thought, oh, we should update it. Now I go, no way, man. No. It's set in 95. Perfect. Leave it there. And yeah. it's really fun and it's apolitical. It's apolitical. You see, you know, he runs I, as an independent, you know, so. For better or worse, I feel like there might be some more buzz on them now. Yeah. Because no, I know, I know yeah. anything that Sam touched, you know, and that was the thing. It's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful story. It's such a sweet story. I think yeah. you guys would really like it. I How did you guys write it? together? Sorry to interrupt, oh, We had a blast. We had a, and, and, and Sam taught me structure, all about script structure. Mm. He's How like he page know? 11. He had a book. He just had a book. He sat there and goes, all right, well now, you know, it's page whatever. We got to do this. But it was so funny. He's like, page 11, we have to say. The inciting incident. The inciting incident. And he says to the governor, because he's just the governor's dog. That's like the perfect candidate's dog. And then the governor gets sick. And instead of dropping out, he proposed his dog as the candidate. And when he was sick and saying, I don't know if I should do it, he said, you have to be true to yourself or else you, the, you and the country loses. So then when dog is, you know, third act, when everything's going, you know, people are hating on dog and stuff like that, the governor says, a wise person told me 
be true to yourself or the country and stuff please you know what i mean so that's mm-hmm. the, yeah. the, the structure that you bring back and do you know what i mean so yeah. it was, and, it, and one producer read it who worked with robert duvall and read all of robert duvall's projects for 30 years literally said this is the most perfect script i've ever read wow structure and perfect and i was like wow it's really cool so Sean, do you remember which book he used i don't i don't I just remember him saying, we got to do this by page 11. It, it, it taught me structure. Yeah. And now like I've talked to my girlfriend about it. So now we'll watch a movie and like everything's going really well. And I go, she goes, oh, it's everything's going really well. And then something bad will happen. She goes, oh, third act. <laughs> so she knows like, you know, we got the plans of the Death Star. Yes. You know, kind of really- it's going to blow us up now. We only have a little bit of time, you know? Yeah. So that, that was really, and he taught me so much about that. And uh, I mentioned his love of the Beatles and things like that uh, in all his music. So I'd see him do the Butties, which was his uh, Beatles cover band, and then the Blanks. Um, and then he was on a show called, I'll just never forget this. He was on a show called City with Valerie Harper. It was a sitcom and he was a regular. And I remember going to see him on the set. And I hope people understand that Sam and I are, are tremendous friends who busted each other's balls all the time. But he was on the set and I like, he looked up in the audience and I was waving to him and he goes, look at me. He, and so he's smiling and going, look at me, look at me. I'm on this, you know, he was mouthing this. He goes, I'm here on a set making money on TV and you're up there crying watching me it was so funny and and i i think i was a, somebody was like oh my god that is so mean and i go oh my god it's hysterical i love you know he was just giving me the hardest time it was so so funny um and then because he was so easy to work with and every meeting it was the kind of thing when we went to meet brian henson and the producers who liked the script we just i was never scared and this is what i've talked about on the show is he was a lovely person and was personable and easy to work with. And that's what we've talked about is so, so important. It was never like I was worried, ooh, I hope Sam doesn't do this or say this or do you know what I mean? It was just the importance. And I and I value that to this day. I mean, I, I know it's weird, Roxy, but it's like, when I brought you into my sketch class, it's not like I was worried, like, oh, I hope Roxy or, you know what I mean? Like, because I know you now and you're a hard worker and you're pleasant to work with and you're a really good people person. It just wasn't an issue, you know? And I learned that from people like Sam, how important that is, you know? Mm. Um, let's see then. Oh, so then I was, there was a sh- cartoon early Disney Channel show when Disney Channel was doing shows on Saturday morning. Um, there was a show called Recess. Mm-hmm. and Love. Recess and yeah. Fillmore, which I loved. Um, and there was a show called Pepper Ann. Pepper Ann, Pepper Ann. Pepper Ann, much too cool for seventh grade. Pepper no Ann. one's cooler She's than one. one. And, yeah. <laughs> and so I was asked by my uh, one of my college friend's wife, who was working on the show, said, oh, we need funny people. She knew me and brought me in. And I did as a writer. 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 So yeah, as a punch up writer. So what they do is they'd write a script and then they'd be done. And then, I mean, this had Nanachka Khan who created um, uh, Fresh Off the Boat, Scott Gipple, who was head of uh, uh, Walking Dead, Um, Matt Negretti, same thing. Um, Laura McCreary, who was on, um, uh, oh God, what's the Terry Crews and Adam, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Brooklyn Nine Nine. Like these are all, they, they were all in this writing room together, and we would joke, wow. and and do these punch ups, and then they needed a couple more people, and that was easily Sam. I just said, yeah, sure, bring in Sam because they read President Dog and loved it, and so he came in, and he just was a joy, talented, hysterical, and again, it was one of those things. I didn't care. I, I mean, meaning, I'm sorry, I didn't care. I didn't worry at all to go, Sam, will you come in? I didn't, was my reputation, I was worried he was gonna destroy or anything. He, they loved him immediately and he was a blast. He was hysterical. So that was, you know, another thing. 
that you could always count on him to show up, be professional and nail it on the talent professional level, but also the personal level. And then the other thing that was most moving when he was on Scrubs and he was doing so well, I remember I wanted to see Elvis Costello and Elvis Costello had just worked with Paul McCartney. And so anything Paul McCartney, Sam loved. And so he knew that and listened to some of that album. And I remember he was, he played here and I had okay seats and I was like, it's such a great show. I just want to go and see him. I just, I really just want to see him finally like close or anything like that. I said, you know, it was just talking. And Sam called me up and said, I just bought his front row seats because he was doing well on scrubs and he bought his front row seats at the Irvine amphitheater to see Elvis Costello. Uh, and we were front row and he said, I wanted to go and I thought I should just take you. And it was really expensive, $75. Wow. <laughs> but what you an- that Front row at a show, $75. <laughs> Pretty amazing I mean, though. That's amazing how cheap, but it was, but that was a lot of money back then. Yeah. And he was just so uh, sweet to do that for me. Um, and then uh, Sean, I'm looking at the Pepper Ann uh, IMDb, and you have a full blown writer's credit on here. I, I wrote an episode. Yeah. And I uh, did a couple voices, and, and uh, yeah, there's an animation of me from Disney that my friend Scott Gimple did on the show Fillmore, which Jeff, you would love Fillmore, by the way. I remember Fillmore. Yeah. I was like far and away recess. Like I'm like yeah. kind of my own TJ Detweiler, um, but I, uh, I love all those shows. Those are like our generation. Yeah. yeah. You're speaking our language, Sean. Well then, uh, then a couple years ago, I, so I heard he got married, he'd gone through a divorce and he, I'd gone through a divorce. So we were very friendly that way together, uh, helping each other through that with each other. And then, um, he, after that, he got married again, and uh, I was with my girlfriend after my divorce, so we met and had great lunches with his new wife and stuff like that, and then he called me up and asked me to do his musical, a show he'd been developing for like 10 years with his longtime best friend, Jill Tracy, and uh, his uh, wife was helping produce it and stuff. They asked me to be a part of it. Sean, just pausing for a second, do you, just because I get curious with these things, do you remember how he met his wife? Any idea? Uh, through she, work at had, all or... she worked on Scrubs. Oh. She worked on Scrubs, yeah. Uh, and cool. then, um, so we had a good time then, and then he asked me to do his musical as the heckler, and I had like six lines, and I dropped a line, one of my lines. And it was, and because I thought it was, I was heckler number one and two, and I could have sworn it was number two's turn. And then, I, and I was like, I don't know what's going on. And Sam during the show goes, wow, never thought of the six lines. He dropped one of them. <laughs> it just, because it, it was kind of like a rehearsal type show, yeah, um, yeah. a reading type show. So it was, I was, and I was so defensive and I was like, no, it wasn't me. And then I looked and I was like, oh, it was me. It was. That's so funny, he, Sean. Like he's. He was like, the truth is, it was your line. <laughs> so I know it was really funny. And this was in like, uh, or, or, and before that we had just gone and celebrated the baby shower. And um, cause his wife was pregnant. And then I did the show in November and she was so big, you know? And then I remember in January, 2019, I was like, ooh, I can't wait to send that text to go like, Sam are you sleeping I bet you're not hey old man he goes oh I'm I'm out uh I'm you know out uh cruising to a movie and dinner with my teenagers I hope you're sleeping Sam you know and then there was a weird message that came from one of his friends said hey can you help Sam and his wife during this time and bring them a meal right and I thought the baby was in trouble and she said no it's it's bad news uh not that that wouldn't have been bad news obviously she said you know sam has cancer and it's metastasized his brain mm. and um so i went and saw him and i there's a picture of him with his new baby i think they're in there ryan and i think there's a i don't know if i put in the pictures of me with his baby yeah so that was when uh 
yeah, that's his new baby. And it was only two months after that he found out he had cancer. Um, so it was so shocking. And I went and I saw his baby um, and uh, he was, you know, tired, but then he got an experimental drug that they thought was gonna last for three years. Yeah, that's when I visited him. That's Weston, named after the town he grew up in. And that's, yeah, there's me with Weston, playing with Weston, so cute. And um, he had a great year. Uh, they had a targeted therapy that was supposed to last three years. And then this one thing was spe specifically supposed to last a year. And he did a lot of stuff. He performed in a play in Connecticut. He played the buddies again. He sang with the blanks again. Oh, that was one thing a few years back to sorry to go off track here a little bit, but a few years back when I was doing conventions, you know, he said, man, the, the blanks are doing really well. And fans are just reaching out. That's the singing group from Scrubs. And when he heard I was doing conventions and stuff, we talked to me about it a little bit. And then they went on a world tour. Uh, the blanks went all over the world. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, uh, so he loved that. That's how he got to personally meet a bunch of fans. And I was saying, dude, you got to bring autographs and things to sign because people will want that. And they did. And they got to travel all over the world. They were so, he was so lucky. With, with his wife. The singing group. But, uh, you know. uh, this was before that. Oh, this before. Before he met her. Yeah, that's why I'm sorry. I was saying the backtrack. But, uh, and then I had a lunch with him in January, in the summer. And then I had another meeting with him with a mutual friend. Now are we back in this We're in summer. 2019. Yeah, the later 2019. We had a wonderful summer meeting lunch. And then we had another meeting. We had another family. Meeting uh, like creative meeting? Not meeting, sorry. I mean a lunch just to catch up with him and see how he's doing. And then we had a great dinner at another friend's house in like September. And then that's the last I had heard. And I remember in the new year thinking, oh, they said a year and is this targeted therapy. And then I heard, you know, he was in a coma. And, but I got to see him before I left. And I went to, well, before one of you the last left. memories I had was, uh, I'm going to say this and you, you guys tell me if it's inappropriate, but I hope it's not. But they said, Sam can hear in his bed at the hospital. He's not really speaking, but he can hear and he's not really reacting. So I said, Sam, I just saw the Grammys and there was this huge, huge foreign act that uh, had a big dance number. And there was all these guys in formal black suits going <laughs> like that is stuff. And I go, See, these foreigners are coming to take our jobs for real. <laughs> he, they said he'd been quiet for days and he just goes, ha, 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 and they actually had to calm him down. He was laughing so hard. Oh. So that was one of my last, uh, I, the last thing I got to interact with him was making him laugh. Sean, that was on the phone? Yeah. And, then when, and got, when, what month was that in? That was probably at the end of, uh january and then wow. i got i saw him right before everything got locked down in february he wasn't conscious but we talked about you know i just we were staying upbeat and talking and you know still hoping that something positive would come out and you know we just talked about president dog and talked about you know i just held his hand and it was just surreal because i had seen my older relatives in this state you know and it was just it just made no sense. And it was kind of odd because I, I left there and they're like, Oh, you're going to be a wreck when you get out of here. And I just wasn't, mm -hmm. I don't, I just did. I didn't believe it. It just made yeah. no sense. It's like a weird movie. I was just so, so weird. And then he hung on for a long time for almost like six weeks after that uh, with some feeding tubes and some help and assistance. And he hung on for a long time and was moved to a respiratory center and like he, he knew nothing about COVID or anything. And then they called me last week to tell me he passed. And that's when it hit me really hard. It was hard, really Sean. Hard. It made no sense. It made Sean, no who, sense. who called you and how did you find out? Uh, I found out I was just on a TikTok live thing and my girlfriend texted and said, I'm sorry to hear about Sam. I go, what are you talking about? And someone had posted it on Facebook. So the, the, somehow I got knocked out of the, thread that of the text that went through and so i found out from a friend's facebook post and then uh um and then i got to talk to his best friend so there was like a huge mix-up of things and so 
Um, but yeah, that was a rough Saturday. It was hard. That's when it really hit me. And just, I, I mean, it, what the weird thing when someone passes is it's just, you think like the things that you remember of them were yesterday. It just felt yeah. like yesterday. And it is that thing of like rushing all these memories come back like a million miles an hour. And it's just so weird. And it feels like, it feels like I could look at my texts and call them right now. You know what I mean? It yeah. makes no sense. It's just a weird thing. Have you been able to speak to his wife, Sean, or any? Yeah, we texted. We texted a few times and, you know, she's like, you know, let's, let's get President Dog out there. And so we'll see, you know, but, you know, she's going through a lot right now. I don't want to put anything on her right now, but I'd love to get it read. I, I was going to ask you guys to read. I totally forgot. I was going to see if you guys could read it before the show, but I forgot. Mm. But uh, I'd love, Jeff's, you know, both of you guys, I respect your writing. I, I'd love to hear Thanks, what you guys think, you know? Yeah um so so sean uh, i also i think i saw at some point you were maybe you instagram this out or something um there is for the for his family for his yes. wife and kid a go fund me or yeah something. it's just to help with the exorbitant bills of being right. in a uh you know in a in the coma and treatments all that stuff's gonna be really tough on his wife and their baby son if you just go to google and put in go fund me for sam lloyd it will come up. Perfect. And so I did a thing on my TikTok live and to help him, I sold autographs and took donations and uh, on Sunday and we raised $500. So wow, wow. that's great. Sean. Yeah. And just like an hour, a little over an hour. It was great. So uh, it's the least I could do. I yeah. mean, it's the least. And so you had mentioned something earlier, Jeff, that, you know, for you were, what did you want to say about my, the mental episode? The mental health episode just you know i loss is really really hard and for any of you know our listeners who are recently dealing with grieving or loss um if you're listening to this podcast you're probably an artist and like science talks about the fact that artists tend to be more empathetic for better and for worse you know i'm sure a lot of sheena's favorite things about you sean are that you're sensitive and a lot of yeah. sheena's least favorite things about you are that you're sensitive <laughs> <laughs> yes um, and so a lot of our listeners are probably that way. And, um, we put out a really good mental health episode to talk about just how to deal with some of the really challenging things that can bubble up and, yeah. you know, grieving losses can be one of the most challenging. So just, it's worth going back and listening and just, you it's know, the most real fun. ways to deal with rejection. Yeah. Um, if I'm, uh, that was kind of like an overall catch all, but it talks a lot about mental health yeah. and stuff. And, you know, losing someone it's it's most important to be taking care of yourself when someone is lost when you lose someone you really love so just take give yourself some grace take some self-care and um the truth is you won't put out your best work unless you're able to channel the emotions that you have productively yeah the truth mm -hmm. is the truth is such That's a beautiful thing for you two to share because so much of acting is telling the truth yeah yeah and we would just of course it would give you know give each other a hard time about stuff too like mm -hmm. going you know, the harsh truth is I'm far more talented than you. You know, I mean, we would just do stuff like that back and forth. Is there any questions in the live or comments, Roxy, at all? Or Just people saying that they're sorry for your loss and that this, that this sucks. Um, yeah. There was a joke earlier on from Weston about the uh, script that you guys wrote, not the dog one, the Muppets one says, as mm -hmm. long as he doesn't slap Miss Piggy. Um, <laughs> Wait, I don't get the reference. Yeah, there, there's an earlier Bond movie in which he, he slaps one of the women. It's often referenced as why Bond is uh, misogynistic and whatnot. So they're just saying it's okay to borrow from Bond as long as there's no slapping yes, of Miss Piggy. That's true. Um, oh my God. We had Benson Honeydew, obviously, as the, you know, giving him his gadgets. And of course, he would test them all out on Beaker, who would get totally, uh, you know, thrown across. The th I mean, it was per, I mean, it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Glenn, Glenn says dog president definitely sound like it needs to happen. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. agree with that. Yeah. It's I a agree. great thing. It's a, it's a, you know, about a bitter campaign manager who's forced to run his thing. And he will always say like, uh, good morning, fur, Ugh, sir, sorry, you know? <laughs> 
and uh, whenever he'd lose him or he'd miss have him to come and go, come here, boy. And it was very oh insulting. Gosh. And, you know, and so Dog, for some weird reason, is a genius. And he goes to his, the, the governor's wife goes to a class and he sneaks into the a little bag and and uh, they're returning papers. He goes, I don't know how you do two papers. Well, obviously, one of them is dogs because that's his name, Dog. Because the little girl, when she gets him, wants to name him Dog. And the campaign manager was like, oh, can't we get a Labrador or something more, you know? And he's just, he just hates the dog and he's allergic. He has an inhaler. And then, John, this could uh, be a silly question, but is it repicturing live action Sonic live type? Action. Yeah, you are. For sure. We never wanted to do animated because like when he goes to the Gen X games and he's trying to get the younger people's vote, he uh, sky surfs with them. <laughs> Oh my gosh. That's <laughs> and so, when he goes so to the, great. the Texas vote, you know, they were like, we need tough people. And he goes, excuse me. And then he's riding on a bull in, in the rodeo. And he goes to the to learn the arts in Hollywood and goes to Sally Field's party and they sing Kiss the Day Goodbye together. <laughs> so, so he's just, uh -huh. you know, and then we just had fun with all the news things. Like Tom Brokaw says, can this dog still bark? He's, his opponents are whining to be let in to his fan base or, you know, his polls and, you know, just playing all the cliches and stuff. It's, it's, it's really a cute fable. And now, my God, it's perfect for live streaming, you know? Disney and, Plus, baby. And the, and the, uh, and the um, uh, what was I going to say? The, the anim, anim, animatronics, or I don't know what you call it, because it's so easily done with talking dogs. Now, there's a person on TikTok who does talking dog stuff that I've seen. She takes her little dog and animates as well. I mean, anyone can do it. And, you know, some people said, oh, well, we need more animals. And we're like, no, the point is he's supposed to feel different. He's supposed to feel different. He's mm. supposed to feel like, ugh, a dog. You know what I mean? And they were kind like, what Bojack if you had like a duck know. vice president? And, and we're like, no, no, that's not the point, you know? So. No, he's Sonic. Sonic, you're so right. Yeah. Why that's does perfect. Sonic feel marginalized and different? Yeah, different world. Yeah, Everybody's yeah. Everybody's a person and it's Sonic's here. Yeah, so I mean, it's that kind of thing and no one knows why. We don't really explain why he's a genius or what, you know, it's just the... And just the funnest thing we had were the little touches. Um, like they're going into a campaign rally or no, a fine restaurant to have a campaign meeting. And they walk in, this woman's trying to walk in with a little poodle and they go, sorry, no dogs allowed. And then dog walks in with the governor and they will let him in. She goes, oh, my good. So if my dog could talk, then you would let me in. And he goes, if your dog could talk, madam, it would say, please get me away from this horrible woman. You know, just stupid stuff like that. And when the farmer is giving away the dog, the little puppy, he's like, oh, I can't wait to get that dog out of here. And they're like, well, let's pick this one. He goes, that one, I hate that one the most. Damn sinuses. And you know, and he runs out, just stupid. It's always fun to do just the little pieces that, and that's what Sam and I would have the best at. And at the end when, you know, he's big shock, he wins. At the beginning of the movie, he says, wouldn't it be great, Governor, if you could have your portrait on the wall in the White House? What an honor. And at the end, when they've walked through and everything, they're walking by and you see the, the guys putting up the portrait of President Dog as they push in. And I get emotional because Sam and I, it's so stupid. We were lap, we were crying so hard when we were typing it. We're like, it's the greatest story ever. We were in some hotel in Ventura and we were crying so hard. And then it's moving me now just because it's so him, you know, so sweet. And of course it has to be wrapped up beautifully and sweetly. Yeah. And that's just who he was. So. John, why were you guys in a hotel in Ventura? Is that where you went to write? Well, you know what I mean? We were doing the normal stuff. And then I've done this with a few big scripts where you just go, uh, we're so close. You know what I mean? We just have to knock out the third act. And we just went up there and would write like, four hours at a time, eat, four hours at a time, eat, four hours at a time, drink, get stung, go to bed, wake up, do the same thing for, you know? And, uh, but yeah, I just remember typing that last thing. It, it's, it's a really fun thing and it's registered. So no one steal that idea. Mm. <laughs> but that's, that to me is, is Sam in a nutshell. How, how much fun we had writing that set. Sweet, funny, kind, 
hopeful, positive. A little weird. A little weird for sure. You know, we had, you would love this, Jeff, a little, a, a Spock kid, like a, a nerdy UFO kid drops off the paper and dog is waiting. No one knows he can talk at that point. And he, he takes them and he throws the paper and he's like, hello, earth dog or whatever. And he throws it and it hits dog's head and dog goes, ooh, drat. And, and the kid doesn't know where it's coming from. He looks up in the sky. He's like, take me with you. <laughs> But Don, just, that's I'm, the, I'm the nerdy space one. Why do you keep saying Jeff will love these things? Yeah, you're right. The nerdy, you're right. Afraid of aliens. <laughs> I think it's just because Jeff and I have talked so much more. And now I know you're right, but I'm just saying Jeff and I have talked about script writing and things like that more than we have. But now really? I'm saying you're writing. Yeah, a little bit. You, I will say just on air, because I say it all the time, Roxy Stryer is one of my favorite writers. No, you, and, as, and I believe, I listen, I, and I'm not trying to diminish you in any way, Roxy, but I, you're right, you're right. I mean, because when I read your pilot, I was blown away. This, this whole show is super duper not about me. I was just making fun of the fact that Jeff is, Jeff, you're the Scrubs uh, expert in here. And you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've missed yeah, yeah, everything. I've, 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 yeah, I've been, yeah. I've you missed, know me at all, Sean. I know. I've missed, I've misfired every time. But No, uh, I love, I love this story though. And I think that even the people in the chat, it speaks to them and it speaks to me. Uh, I don't know that I'm the demo, but it still does speak to me. Well, yeah. we just want our main thing was make the, people it, smile and but it's a we want it to be a family movie, not the one that you go, oh, I got to take my kid to see this awful totally. thing. We Sean, all I, go and have a blast. I really you know? think you should. Did you see the new Sonic movie? No, I should. I'm huh? telling you that okay. is that is the movie that I think will sell this movie. It's the second one. Is there no, two, right? It's the live action Sonic movie that came out in March. Okay, say? I'll check it out. Maybe February. It's awesome, um, okay. but it's family friendly. Jim Carrey. Yeah. Um, and it's really, uh, it's really good. What, what the hell, uh, Jeff? James Marsden. No, that's not what I was gonna say. The uh, voiceover actor who's also in Parks and Rec that uh, we like. Uh, he's like Nick Offerman. Is no, he no, he, he's um, Jenny Slater's brother on the show. Oh, Ben Schwartz. Ben Schwartz, thank you. you uh, he's the voice of Sonic. He does an okay. awesome job. He's a big voiceover actor. Thank you, Jeff, for helping me get to that. I'm, I'm sure. going to credit well, our producer, I'm Ryan. Gonna, I'm going oh, to this, I'm gonna send this script to you guys and see what you think. I'd Great. love to. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you well, for sharing all that with us, Sean. No, I think, I think it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's important to know that what if you're creative, express it because it matters to people. You have no idea who it touches. You have no idea why. And that's why I kind of, when I'm looking at TikTok and I used to love Vine too, the same thing, you go, wow, a lot of people have a lot of great sense of humor and are talented. You know, even as some people who just have a few followers, but the comments in there, they go, my God, you made my day. You have no idea. You touch people's lives wow. and Sam touched everyone he knew, uh, everyone that was in his circle's life. And then obviously the th tons of fans who got to see his talent. And uh, if you can take away anything, don't be 80 years old and say, I should have. Even if it's painting, if it's anything artistic to express yourself, it's gonna make somebody feel good. And that's what he did. He lived his, he lived his truth the entire time. Mm. And the harsh truth is I'm gonna miss him very much. I, um. I loved him, he was a great guy. So as always, where can we find you? Roxy? Everywhere at Roxy Stryer. And Jeff? Go to my Instagram at Jeffrey Crane Graham. And now you can find me everywhere with my mentor, Roxy. Everywhere at Sean Whalen Actor. As always, thank you so much for letting me be part of your journey. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.